So up until about third grade, math class is great. Students usually have this carefree intuition with math, and they are confident, happy even. They like math. Who does that? But then at some point, everything changes. Ever wonder why? Pammy, I noticed that you're still struggling at your long division fluency, but I've made the process so simple, even you could do it. Just remember the steps. Divide, multiply, under, subtract, remainder. But if you're having a hard time remembering that, just remember the letters of the acronym, D-M-U-S-R. But if you're having a hard time remembering that, just remember our clever mnemonic. Donuts make us saggy rotundas. D-M-U-S-R. Divide, multiply, under, subtract, remainder. See, this is simple. Just follow the steps. I'm going to send you home with lots of extra worksheets so you can gain proficiency. Yep, yeah, pretty sure that's when math class started to suck. <laughs> Did you ever wonder why we had to learn long division? I mean, when I was a kid, adults tried to get away with telling me it would be very important to know when I became an adult. You know, like if I had to balance a checkbook or work a cash register or something. Now I realize that all my deep-rooted trust issues come from the fact that I was lied to. Nobody uses the long division algorithm as an adult. I mean, perhaps 30, 40 years ago, accurate pen and paper calculations might have been handy, but let's just be honest, who's really going to bust out long division on paper anymore? Even my old-fashioned push-button phone can do division. Imagine what a 10-year-old's fancy smartphone can do, and they've all got them. So, Last September, after years of constantly searching for ways to make math relevant to teenagers, by a stroke of providence, I found myself teaching fourth grade math for part of the day. It was a crazy change because fourth graders haven't been disillusioned by life yet. They have this wonderfully curious nature and they love to explore new ideas and they don't have to be bribed or threatened to participate in class. Well, inevitably, we made it to the long division unit. And, of course, I started teaching it the same way I learned as a child, and saying, this is simple, just follow the steps. One day I watched my students as they worked in that creepy way that teachers do, and there was this sad, heavy silence in the room. And they weren't even necessarily doing the long division wrong, they just hated life at that moment. I felt this twinge of guilt deep in my bowels, but I thought to myself, how else will they ever be proficient at division? They must be able to keep up with the demands of our modern, technology-driven job market, and proficiency in mathematics is the only way that will happen. So I collected the assignments, and I found this little note written in the margin of Carly's paper, which really wasn't that surprising since Carly was constantly writing me notes like, I love math, or you are so pretty and funny and I love you. Who could blame her? <laughs> but this time it said, Mrs. Warren, I'm sorry that I'm bad at math. And that twinge of guilt started to feel more like a very painful cramp. I wanted to write her a note of my own that said, Carly, this is not math. At least, it shouldn't be. Am I the only one that has ever wondered at the ridiculousness of this thing we call math? How many times must a child's natural curiosity and confidence be sacrificed on the altar of proficiency before we realize that something needs to change? It was there in that fourth grade classroom where I came face to face with the reality of math education in our country. It's kind of pointless. Don't get me wrong, math is not pointless. Mathematics, as Galileo said, is the language with which God has written the universe. Math is everywhere and of course is extremely useful for countless applications. 
I'm talking about what is taught in the classroom and why it is being taught. I mean, are we being honest when we tell our kids the years of laboring over algorithms and formulas will all be useful for a job someday? Really? When was the last time you found the volume of an ellipsoid or the imaginary roots of a quadratic equation at your job? I'll never forget the first smarty pants high school student who challenged me with the questions. You know, the questions that every high school math student ever asks. What is the point of all this? When will I ever use it? Well, Alex, I've got news for you. You probably won't. In fact, studies show that very few Americans will ever need to use anything more than basic arithmetic or fractions in the workplace. And whether it's basic arithmetic or basic derivative calculus, it's all available in the blink of an eye on your smartphone or computer, so there really wasn't any need to spend thousands of hours struggling in the classroom because it's all right there in the palm of your hand. So it would seem that the radical development of technology has made math education irrelevant and unnecessary. If getting the answer right, if being proficient is really the goal of our education, then couldn't we save ourselves a lot of hassle if we just left math to the most proficient ones of all, computers? I mean, who better to follow rules and algorithms? Is there no place in mathematics for the human element? For the Carlys and the Alexes and the everyday people like me that struggle to find any connection between the classroom and real life? Quite the contrary. I believe the need for math education has never been greater, never been more necessary than in this modern technology-driven culture where presidential debates are no longer built on solid logical arguments, but rather 20-second sound bites meant to placate an ignorant voting populace. Where a hateful political climate is driven by impulse and emotion, instead of wisdom and discourse. Where our children are driven to and fro by the winds of confusion in a battle for their own identities. Oh yes, we need mathematics. But not the math that you and I were taught. We need something that reaches outside the boundaries of the classroom and touches real life. We need a renaissance. So there was this dude, his name was Isaac Newton. He was kind of famous, I guess. I think he like invented gravity or something. Well, he wrote a lot about where he got his inspiration. He said, if I have seen further, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. I mean, this man's discoveries anchored the scientific revolution, and yet he, of all people, recognized that his great accomplishments were made possible only because he stood upon the shoulders of the ancients. Aristotle, Euclid, Archimedes, Plato, and other classical scholars, men who studied math for a much different purpose than we do today. You see, ancient scholars were less interested in what math could help you do, and they were more concerned with how math could affect who you are as a person. They presented math as an exploration of the mind, a personal quest for truth. It was this desire to uncover truth that motivated Newton and other Renaissance scientists to make their world-changing discoveries. But what I find most intriguing is that classical mathematics wasn't aimed primarily at professional mathematicians or people who would use it in the workplace. One of the most influential works of ancient philosophy is Plato's Republic. 
In it, Plato argued that mathematical training was the number one priority for anyone in a position of authority in matters of the state. And not because of its utility in daily living, but rather in the spirit of a philosopher, math should be studied because its ultimate aim is to lead the mind to truth. You see, what Plato and other philosophers knew and what we seem to have forgotten is that math is hands down the greatest tool for training the mind to reason well, think well, argue well, to seek out truth and staunchly defend it. These men knew that in order for a democracy to succeed, citizens would need a kind of wisdom that only mathematical training could develop. Doesn't this mean something coming from the civilization that introduced democracy to the rest of the world? The mathematical philosophy of the ancient Greeks reached far beyond their borders and their time, influencing not just mathematicians and scientists for millennia to come, but also political leaders like, surprise, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln wrote that when he wished to demonstrate the truth of a proposition, when he really wanted to prove something beyond the shadow of a doubt, he could only do so thanks to his persistent study of classical Greek mathematics. And that ancient ideal of seeking out and defending truth was showcased for all the world to see when Lincoln boldly argued the proposition that all men are created equal. How skillfully did he argue that truth? And how staunchly did he defend it? We cannot underestimate the power of math education to change the course of history. And thanks to the democratic ideals handed down to us from ancient Greek civilization, we all, as citizens, have positions of authority in matters of the state. Do we not need citizens and rulers who, like Abraham Lincoln, seek out truth and defend it? What could be a more relevant connection between the classroom and real life than this? But the wisdom ancient scholars had in mind wasn't cultivated by, this is simple, just follow the steps. And unlike today, learning wasn't seen as just a transfer of information from the teacher to the student. No, in the ancient tradition, learning was seen as an exchange. It was full of questions, not from the student, but from the teacher. By asking purposeful and well-timed questions, the teacher would guide the student to discover the answers for himself. It's no wonder that so much of ancient Greek philosophy was written in the form of a dialogue. Because to them, education was a two-way street, more like a discussion than a lecture. It was this process, this dialogue, that developed the critical thinking skills required to reason well, think well, argue well, to seek out truth and defend it. No acronyms or clever mnemonics required, just dialogue. I'm trying to remember when math class ever resembled anything close to a dialogue? All I remember is a one-way street where the teacher gave me the steps to get the answer right and I wrote them down in my notes. No dialogue, no discovery, just write this down so you can be proficient. As an educator, I have spent so much time focused on how to teach math, when all along I really should have been focused on why we teach math. The ancient Greeks knew the why, and from that, the how flowed naturally as a result. Of course, if personal discovery of truth is our goal, if cultivating discerning and wise citizens is our goal, then we must train every student to think for himself. 
But this can never be accomplished with the DMUSR kind of education that we experienced growing up. The day after I read Carly's note, I marched into that fourth grade classroom and I swore to them that as long as I was their teacher, they would never do the long division algorithm ever again. Carly raised her hand and said, but Mrs. Warren, how will we do the division? Is there any other way? And honestly, I had no idea. I was totally just making it up as I went, but I just started asking them questions. What is division? How does it relate to the other operations? What are we even trying to do? And that was when a bunch of fourth graders conjectured and debated and discussed ideas until they came up with a division algorithm of their own, which probably isn't really that inspiring because who cares? A calculator will do division for you. But it's not the having of knowledge that makes math relevant. It's the discovery. We will restore meaning to mathematics when we embrace the same time-honored tradition that raised up some of the greatest minds in history. But we must make education a two-way street where we ask our children questions to lead them to solve problems themselves instead of just giving the steps to get the right answer. I experienced a beautiful renaissance in my math classes when I started having real, purposeful dialogue with my students. Dialogue that I hope will equip them to be citizens who discover and defend truth in our world. I am confident that when we teach math for the right reasons, we will never again have to ask, what is the point of all this?